Hey beautiful and handsome people, today I greet you, it's morning here and I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to my followers and the followers that are yet to be here. Now this is for last unscripted experiences and today I am joining my voice with the voices of the women advocating for, for no domestic violence in the families by sharing my own experience which happened directly to my mom yes my biological mom she had been living in uh, an abusive marriage before she decided to take a walk i'm going to take you through the story but before then i want to inform my followers on you that the the group the um, channel rather has been changed to for last unscripted experiences for uh you know uniformity i am a a linguist and i have passion for the yoruba language and it's not going to change but then i want to lend my voice i want people to see what is what I am passing through what other people are passing through and learn from it the culture of reading is going down and perhaps you are not reading you're not going to be going through some literatures that I went through that I read that helped me in the in the process of development I want you to know that you can listen to all these experiences You can listen to all these experiences that we are sharing here and still be a better person for yourself for your generation now the yoruba lekonere is changed to follow unscripted experiences i want you to follow me on youtube and let's get our generation clean clean of all the negative acts um so now as i told you my mother was in an abusive marriage yes according to the story that i know and what I, I i grew up to see my mom went to lagos to hozu as a young person as a teenager and that was where she met my dad and they came together and they started having us like having children so my mom was still hustling and my mom my dad was also doing some all these in um many works in uh, in lagos then then i learned to know that there were lots of times they would quarrel they would on one part my dad was very caring she my mom told me that anytime she put to bed any of her children and my dad can wash clothes can do this but after that moment the whole thing is gone she was cooking selling all this and um, mama put in her rice and all that i was told that my dad will bring people to her, her shop i think she was selling in front of the house they, they were living there she she he will bring people to the house to heat and will not pay any money for it neither will he give her any sub any money to support the business that was going on and on until she decided to go look for uh, another means of survival back in her state in ocean state Mugo. and when she got there she was so lucky she told me that she really prayed and one of her distant brothers like somebody somebody just helped her and put her name and those put uh, all these um, small care workers, healthcare carers, carers, care workers in Ocean State. And then, as she was working, she took my younger brother along with her. I was staying alone with my dad in Lagos. My dad had no time for me. You know, I told you a little bit of it in my previous video. You can go and watch it what i went through i'm still going to delve more into it 
the things that I passed through while staying with my dad in Lagos alone. Now, I was staying with my dad alone and my brother was there with my my mom. So, there was this doctor in that hospital. The man was a Christian. Very nice. And seeing a single mother, like obviously to him, he she was a single mother and he decided sometimes to give her uh, money sometimes you know little little assistance here and there so while i was in lagos we usually travel down every third term after the holiday to come and stay with my mom and on, on one of those instances we had an accident that was really god that saved us i bumped my head on one of the iron behind the driver seat and that was it on getting to <clears throat> my mom's place that time my dad discovered that my mom was living far better beyond what he expected and he was wondering and my mom told him that okay this person is helpful this person is helpful so i think one thing added to another he had he was he became jealous like a lot of times when we travel down like that it will be there are usually series of you know quarrels my dad will be telling her to to bring money for this he does not care for for with the children there was jealousy and you know there was no trust obviously that a woman can get help and can get um to that point kind of to that kind of ex extent of help without opening her legs so we traveled down and as i traveled down back with my dad i felt terribly sick at a point due to malnutrition and maltreatment from the people that my dad used to leave me with so that happened and after a little time of recovery i was not totally recovered when i was sent back to my mom that is better i stayed with my mom i remember on one of those occasions i was terribly ill and the people i was staying with maltreated me i went to an uncompleted building and i was crying and all of a sudden somebody came to call me in that uncompleted building that ha ah, come 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 your mom my mom had this instinct she came all the way from ocean state to lagos state to come and check her child like she told me i was very little then she told me maybe around seven or so seven eight or so i was very little so she told me that she just felt uneasy she had been feeling uneasy for some days before she decided that it was time she came to check me and when she got there i was super lean and everything then she decided that she was taking me along with her to ocean state to leave so we got there i am um, my dad was informed that so something happened that the mom has come to to take her then after some time my dad came to visit us so every time he used to ask who is this person that is taking care of you people who is this person it must be that something is wrong something is something is fishy if it's not that you are going out with this doctor the, the, this man cannot be doing this for you and that so every time there was always quarrel and this man that, that was the medical doctor of that uh health center then was very is very instrumental to the person i have become today anywhere that man is in fact god will bless you god will bless that man i don't want to mention his name yet but i know that i'll mention his name probably is watching this video now my dad was jealous and was bitter these are people that you didn't help and these are people my dad is still alive and i really am adding this so that the men that we have now can change and and take take things right now there was this do, this uh, medical doctor that was you know i took him later on as my guardian so he used to take us to church we attend the Palai bible church so he introduced us to the church it was very nice in fact those times you don't have food to eat there was one time like that in Ocean State there was this strike 
I think it was Governor Kondi that was it was it, it didn't it didn't pay the workers then, so we were not fed. We would do um, um, um this um a we do draw soup. They use okra as concussion, but this time it was a redo. We use as concussion and just manage with anything we see. Being that it was only my mom that was taking care of us, this man will go and buy meat, fish, buy pepper and everything and bring it. Had money to eat for sustenance. So it was really kind, and I, I was. It was out of you know passion and kindness and sympathy for a single mom having to go through the stress of taking care of two children all by herself knowing fully well that she's handing just little from what she's doing so there was a day the man took the doctor took me to fellowship we had gone and he was the youth leader in that fellowship then we used to he, he would take out his time to drop all the youth in their houses before eventually we get back home those were the some of the things that helped me and you know it helped my endurance level so it took so, so sometimes you do get home around night like around 10 sometimes to 11. so the, this day it was a thursday it was a thursday revival service that we went for and we were coming i didn't know that usually when my dad come then there was no telephone now so i'll just get home and meet my dad but this day i didn't know that he had come all of a sudden, we got to the junction of, there was a juncture, it was like a corner to bend to before we get to our house. And that was how we saw my mom. I saw my mom run out of the bush. She ran out of the, of the bush, running and was shouting. She was, I, she knew the sound of the car and the, you know, the way the car looks at night. So she was running, running towards the car, speeding. I was really scared. I've not been, I've, I, in fact, it was the first time I was experiencing that kind of, fear in my life and was waving down the car was shouting where 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 the means madman so she waved down and um, that um, doctor that was driving i was the only person in the car with him and he just said my uh, doctor said he should enter she should enter she said no that it should be vast first with speed he reversed to the back and my mom my mom entered when my mom entered she and doctor quickly um, um, swerved and you know turned and started going. She said, "Where are we going?" She said, "We are going to meet my grandma." <coughs> so in a, she was explaining everything that happened in the house. That my dad came inside and was drunk. Probably he smoked something or he drank something. So he was drunk. I was saying that he was going to kill her. So he said it was when he went outside to go and get something, either something to harm her, that's when she ran out. And as she ran out, he was chasing her. That as a car went past her and saw that the, he, she was right ahead of her because my mom, my mom has a very small stature so she could really lift her body. So that, and you can imagine how my dad was chasing after her, running after her, running after her. That as she saw that the um, the night was very dark and there was no car coming, she just swerved and entered a, a bush. Inside that bush, there was soja and she endured the bite. Then he saw my dad run after, um, as, um, in front of her, but right there she already hid in the bush, and he came back. So my dad, my mom said she knew that we were coming and she waited, she waited. And saw the car coming and waved us down. Now, on getting there, uh, uh, that was the story she told us. Then we went to grandma's house. It was a very horrific night. We were scared for my brother that was in the house alone with a drunk man and all that. A man that was almost like insane. So we went to my grandma. Then we said, my mom said there's no way she can go back to that house. That the man can harm. That he wants to be sure that my brother was fine. So they went to the, and they left me with my grandma. They went to the police station to report. The police followed her, and they went to arrest my dad in the house. And 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 my mom said she wanted a, a solution to this because she does not, she didn't trust her him. She didn't trust what he could do after then. And that was how they went to court. My mom said she wanted. Uh, 
them to to separate them my guardian said that the bible is against divorce so that was where the uh, compromise was was but this is uh, this was a matter of life and death imagine my dad had caught up with my mom that night she should be dead right now and i wouldn't be here telling you this story right now probably something has happened to me too or anything i don't know so i can't just imagine the sight right now so the bible is against divorce but you can give yourself some space to be alive to take care of your children because obviously the man he's not doesn't have enough um empathy sympathy to take care of a child the man is not is not enough let me continue my story so they got to the court and um the 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 judge said i don't know, i think it was the magistrate court so she asked um her that which of the children does she does she want him to take my mom said no i can't give my children to this man because i don't trust him you can use them for rituals so <laughs> that was what she said and the judge said that he should the man should move away um the, my dad should move away from us for, for a while he should send the means of um, survivor to us probably money and everything and that was it my dad left i learned he left like that and my mom came back home fortunately my brother was very good and when she got got home she said she met her neighbor the name of that neighbor yadi i know her children should be seeing this now they they won't forget they should be able to remember and relate with what i'm saying now the woman said how oh, yakin it means that yakin are you sure you can cope with the expense the expenses of of training of taking care of two children she's my mom with boldness told her that don't worry god will help me and sincerely truly god helped her here we are today and though it was not easy but i really say i really can say that it is better to walk to take a walk than to endure a marriage that is filled with abuse with brutals with anything like with beating it's actually safer for the children i wouldn't have been who i am today if my mom had not taken that bold step if she had not ran for her life first if she had said that she was going to stand and wait for the man say my boy is there my child is there i have a daughter i have to this hmm. only god knows what will have been my 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 lot today women are nation builders so we have a lot to do in the, in the aspect of decision making don't be scared of what might be strive to be alive first because no other mother can take care of your child like you would have so be alive first so that was how my mom survived an abusive marriage because she ran because she ran away like she didn't do <laughs> she just she didn't just take a walk she ran and she stood by us she became a man in the flesh of a woman yeah there is still more to it i'll be sharing later but that was it run away from a jealous husband stay away from a jealous husband take care of your children and make sure you don't plant bad seeds in them no matter what the man has done you still make sure they see the, they, they, the children can see what is going on they can see what is going on and they'll be able to pick the wrong the right from the wrong so that is it i'll see you again in my in my next video that is it i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you have learned one thing or the other and you'll be having more of this please remember to subscribe and click on the notification button so that you will be the first to receive alerts when we release the next 
unscripted story of my life. Thank you. I remain for last day, and I'll see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>